So how are we doing? I'm just about to head out for a heel session with two friends. I've got running power now on the 955. I'm using the HRM Pro uh, heart rate strap to capture that data. I'm also using the wrist-based power, which is the new Garmin feature on the Enduro 2. So we're gonna check the wrist versus the heart rate strap being calculated on the 955. And we can look at heart rate as well of the Enduro versus the chest strap. And this is gonna be a tough session. So I'll see you in a bit. It's saying, do I not add running power? Add the new running data screen to your running activities and track your effort in real time. Okay, that's what I want to do. Running power added. The running power data screen will now appear on all your activities when you run. Okay. <laughs> So guys, um, as we go through this first rep, and don't worry, I'm not going to show every rep. Uh, basically, I'm just going to talk you through a few things of this video. So obviously, I am going to show you just running to the top of this hill. Um, I'm going to be there any second. Then we're going to look into an analysis of the whole run. So this is an eight mile run. Um, and just going into some of the weird things I saw with the peaks and the dips. And lastly, we're going to finish off in how you can get this installed on your watch. So thank you so much for listening. And if you need to skip through the video, just use the kind of skip shortcuts that I've got at the bottom. Uh, thank you very much. My impressions of the first mile are, it's not as accurate as the HRM Pro, but it's pretty darn good. And it seems to be very consistent, which is all you're looking for with, with the power anyway, is you want to see that consistent metric that you're able to base your effort level off of. Because it's at the end of the day, all it's ever going to be is an estimation. But anyway, I'm at the top of this hill and we're going to do this hill rep session. So wish me luck and I'll try and get as many clips as I can. Thank you to Garmin for adding this feature. Um, massive kudos and respect, to be honest. I mean, we have been asking for it and they've they've delivered. As you'll see, the first thing I noticed is that the Enduro 2 was kind of spitting out some really weird power numbers, like around 800. And I think Garmin was clever enough, or the Enduro was clever enough to spot that it was high and kind of remove those anomalies. What you can notice is that the 955 in blue and the Enduro 2 in the red is that there's a bit of di discrepancy between the power with the 955 with the heart rate strap reporting slightly higher numbers. Um, and as you'll see, that's kind of a common theme uh, throughout this session. What we're looking at here is a, a eight mile run. So you can see the distance down below. Um, I go all the way to eight miles, uh, just over. Um, took me just over an hour as well. Um, and it was hill rep. So yeah, you're gonna see me go backwards and forwards up and down this hill. And I end up totaling, I think about 550 feet of uh, elevation. So it's quite a workout. You'll be able to see my heart rate comparison as well. But yeah, just watch as the time goes on and I'm running up and down this hill. Um, I'm just approaching the climb here. So I'm running and just looking at my watch and notice there is a bit of discrepancy here as I approach the climb stop here to get my breath and shoot a little vlog for you guys as you'll see in a second and off we go and I'm going this is the descent so I'm running downhill and when I get to the bottom we turn around and sprint back up the hill again and as you can see what's weird as well is if the Enduro 2 um, throughout the run stayed you know 20 watts below then it would have been normal but then it seems to kind of catch up and report similar numbers as the 955 so uh, it's a bit weird here because with what power, although it's an estimation, what you want to see is that there's a general trend and whatever calculation it's doing, it's doing with reliability so that you can rely on it to see if you're working too hard. And it seems that, I don't know, I'm getting a more of a response from the 955 heart rate strap. And as I'm looking down and putting more effort into this climb, and it was a tough climb, I'm seeing the 955 being really responsive with those peaks. And I'm also seeing it being more responsive with me slowing down. Yeah, I don't know, because DC Remaker reported that he was seeing more responsiveness with the wrist-based power on his Fenex series, but I wasn't seeing that today. And again, you know, this is just one run. Granted, this is running for eight miles, so you would have thought with such a long data collection, you would have started to see, uh, you know, the trends here, to be honest. And I think the trend is, is that I think wrist-based power maybe isn't as good as the heart rate strap which was using the 995 watch to, you know, record the data. And I think, I mean, the heart rate strap model for Garmin's already been proved as an effective method for collecting heart rate. But obviously, 
I'm not convinced really with the reliability just at the moment of the wrist-based power collection. And again, just bear in mind that I am super respectful and grateful that Garmin have added this feature. And this is just an alpha testing, you know, um, example of it working. So, you know, as Garmin continue to develop their calculations for the wrist, I'm sure this will get better. And, you know, I, I'm just super excited because this just means that we don't need the heart rate strap. And, you know, every day now, our Garmin watch is becoming more and more self-reliant. So really exciting stuff here. Garmin are crushing it with the updates. Good to see it come to lower end watches such as the 255. And yeah, hopefully they sort out a few of the issues that I've seen here. And yeah, I, I think it's very promising. Even with the data we've got here, I think that it's definitely usable for a race because when I was going up the hills, I could see the power going up. And when I was going down, I mean, you can see the trends here. I mean, it's it's almost spot on with a heart rate strap. So I'm really not worried. I think Garmin are going to crush this in terms of their release. And they've got, you know, a couple of weeks yet to really iron this out. But yeah, super exciting stuff. And thank you for watching. Okay, so I guess if you're still watching, you really want to know how to get power on your new Fenex 7, your Enduro, your Epix Gen 2. So just bear in mind that the information I'm going to tell you is how to download the beta program onto your watch and how to enroll yourself onto that. But just bear in mind that you're basically running guinea pig software. So if something goes wrong with your watch or you're getting wrong data or if you're trying to, you know, navigate with this watch out in the wild, you know, um, I wouldn't rely on it because you're running dummy software that they are using to test in their beta program and the whole point of the program is that if you find any bugs which you're supposed to um, you let Garmin know so they can fix them so that before it's released to the general public um, yeah they've kind of ironed those things out so I just thought I'd let you know please 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 don't download this unless you want to try out the running power and then again if you do want to download it make sure you follow the steps really carefully just to make sure nothing goes wrong but yeah I've tried to simplify it as much as possible to sign in to your Garmin Connect on the internet and then you'll need to go over to your devices. You can see my free devices here that I'm currently testing and then you'll click on your device to so go on device settings and then click join beta program. Okay, so when you click that, there's no return. So just make sure that you actually know what you're doing. Um, read up on the risks you're taking and how to exit the program um, and make sure you're kind of happy with that. Um, so that's the 255 and let me just show you what it looks like when you join the beta program so I've joined it on the Enduro 2 and it says beta enrolled and look I can leave the beta program here but just bear in mind when you leave it doesn't mean that the software comes off of your your watch as of tomorrow you're still stuck with the beta software until you know Garmin release that to the public and then that you know full release will be given to your watch and then of, of that moment you'll be you know running normal software so just bear in mind that yeah, if this is your only watch, uh, you might be running into issues, so maybe not take the risk. Well done, gang, so you're nearly there. Um, just to let you know, so once you've enrolled yourself to the beta program, your Garmin's going to automatically download that beta software. Yeah, and you can download it quicker if you go on to Garmin Express, connect your watch to your computer, and just download all the updates. I recommend you do that. Now, to get running power, you'll need to download the alpha build of the software. So you've got alpha and you've got beta. Alpha is like the um, the newest kind of one, which is going to have even more bugs. So that's why they, you know, give you the option if you want to download that and install it at your own risk. So I'm going to show you the forum to download that on uh, with the information to do that. Okay. Forums.garmin.com. Uh, when you're on forums.garmin.com, you'll click on the beta program. And just bear in mind that you'll need to be signed in. So you'll need to create a sign in page. Then you'll be able to click on the beta program, which I have done here. Um, you'll need to go to the Fenex 7 Enduro 2 Epix 2. And then after that, you want to look at the, I believe, announcements. And here we go. We've got the alpha version 10.33. So you can click on that. Once you've clicked on, uh, we've got this lovely dude here that works for Garmin who's posted this a day ago. Uh, fair to um, DC Rainmaker, kudos to him. I don't know if he gets emails or notifications or what, but he is on it like a car bonnet with this. Um, and if you've got an Epix 2, you can download your software here. Whoops, I just downloaded the Epix 2 stuff. Um, if you click the Fenex, you'll download the Fenex 7 stuff. Obviously, if you've got Fenex X, make sure to click this one as well as your Enduro 2 because you've got a bigger watch. And you've also got the Fenex 7 over here, 7S, sorry. Um, yeah, update software. This is going to give you the alpha model of the of the software. Bear in mind, it's got this really confusing note here saying that 
as of the May the 25th, there was this kind of secure config file. And I read this, I read this maybe five or six times. I had no idea what it was doing. Um, you know, the watch I bought myself and I was a bit nervous to install this, to be honest. So yeah, this is terrifying. But once you download your watch's software, you're going to get a little text file and the text file is going to show you and explain what this means. So I would say ignore this until you've downloaded your software and that you've read the text file that's included in the package and it's just going to show you what file it's on about and where to drag it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is for newbies. I mean, if you're not a newbie, you already know what you're doing. And in that case, you know, follow their instructions. Um, I'm assuming that you haven't enrolled into the beta program already. You've got all these um, things here. So this is what's been added. Really cool anchor sale activities, the auto rests, which is already on the Enduro, but now it's coming to 955. But what we're excited about really is the morning report and also the wrist-based run power supports. So number 15 and number 8 are really cool. Um, also coming to the 955 is the grade adjusted pace. And as I explained in the next clip, grade adjusted pace is fantastic. So yeah, that's the page you need to go to. I'll leave a link in the description. People might ask, um, what's the point of having wrist-based power if you've got grade adjusted pace? Well, right now I'm running off a very tough hill and my grade adjusted pace is about 8.20, um, 8 minutes and 20 seconds per mile. And I feel like I'm exerting a very big effort. But if I look at my, if I look at my power, which I know, you know, if I'm running around 500 watts, I'm putting out near lactate threshold. And I'm at, to be honest, 350 watts. So, you know, that's why I'm finding it tough. Because I'm about to start producing more lactate than I can clear in my body. You know, whereas it's hard to get that sense of effort from pace alone, you know? And look at the two together, it's just, you know, the cherry on top. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this workout, get some dinner, and then upload this. I hope it's been really informative. If you want to subscribe for more, I'm looking to go a bit more professional with the stuff I do. Keep watching, like, comment and subscribe. Um, and thank you. I can't wait to put out hopefully some really awesome reviews. And I'll be fair and I'll be honest. And again, I hope it's a very informative video for you, for you viewers. Ciao. Thanks for watching. You know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe if you can. My slogan, dreams are a step away. Remember, show compassion. Show esteem and have fun out there. Peace out.